Hello everyone, this is Ryan with your Average Med Students, and in this video, we will give you a brief overview of how we passed the USMLE Step 1 in 4-6 to six weeks. We'll start by giving a summary of high yield resources to utilize, a study schedule made by Koi, another one of our channel leaders, and some philosophical advice for you all. To embody the ethos of a med student, we will be saving time and providing you with a Google spreadsheet of our practice exam scores and statistics. Without further delay, let us begin. For me, I was a student who did Anking V12 throughout the first two years of my preclinicals. During Dedicated, I did not keep up with my cards as much, but I would often review first aid on earlier topics that I may have forgotten. I completed all of my AMBOSS questions for each in-house exam, and I saved the entirety of UWorld for my Dedicated period. For Koi, he started doing Anking V12 at the beginning of MS2. He kept up with his cards daily, utilized Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, High Yield Melman PDFs to review weaker topics throughout the year. He also finished all of his UWorld questions for each block before his in-house exam. For Dan, he also did Anking V12 throughout his first two preclinical years, but he did not keep up with his cards during Dedicated. He completed all of his UWorld questions for each block before in-house exams. Let's jump into well-known resources that are out there. In no order of importance, we recommend First Aid for its highly condensed information layout and figures, Boards and Beyond and Pathoma for its thorough explanations in digestible videos, and finally Anki for space repetition. We all use the Anking V12 decks during our preclinicals. In terms of QBanks, we have UWorld and AMBOSS. Both are good, so just pick whatever you have the subscription for. If you have the time and the resources, it also doesn't hurt to do both QBanks as it will maximize exposure to different question types that you may see on exam day. Other resources that are highly recommended by us are the Melman High Yield Documents. These are documents with the X plus Y equals Z formatted notes, which are very high yield for the board exams. He usually extracts this information from a variety of resources and condenses them into these notes. Dirty Medicine also provides videos that break down concepts into memorable mnemonics. For me personally, these were very helpful in memorizing very difficult pathologies such as the glycogen storage diseases. Ultimately, when it comes down to resources, less is more. The key with step 1 is to pick your favorite resources and utilize them to their fullest potential. For me personally, I found jumping between resources to be a waste of time, especially when I was crunched for time during step 1 dedicated. For medical students who are in their preclinical years, this chapter will be for you. Step 1 is a beast of an exam and it is imperative that you do not underestimate how difficult this exam can be. To put things into perspective, passing is a 60% raw score on average or getting 120 questions correct out of 200 questions on a practice exam. However, these are not your typical first order questions. These are high level questions that assess your underlying knowledge and force you to apply them in new and unfamiliar clinical situations. That is to say, it is not easy to get a passing score. As you navigate your curriculum, please make an effort to keep up with the onking flashcards and unsuspend any relevant cards as you go. Meanwhile, we also recommend having a subscription to one of the QBanks and completing the relevant blocks as you go. Before you take your in-house exams, you should have ideally finished the onking deck for that block, as well as one of the QBanks for that block. The most important tip, however, is to never resuspend cards from previous blocks. Yes, it is a lot of work to continue doing cards for early blocks, but this will save you an immense amount of time and effort in the long run. This is the most important chapter for our video, and it goes alongside our philosophy for our Step 2 guide. We believe that the number of questions that you complete during your Step 1 prep is directly proportional to your chances of passing. During our dedicated periods, we all completed around 160 questions a day, untimed and in tutor mode. A question that we commonly got from our viewers was how we were able to complete so many questions in a single day with time left to review the rationale. The key was to focus on extracting the most high yield points from each question as quickly as possible. Let's take a look at a case example of this step 1 question that we generated with ChatGPT. On average, it takes around 60 to 90 seconds to answer each question. If you get the answer correct, simply skim the explanation to make sure that the rationale was in line with yours, and then move on. If you get it wrong, then simply look at the rationale provided by the QBank. Then ask yourself, what is the one piece of information that I needed to get this question correct? And that's it. 
Quickly scan the explanation to identify the vital piece of information. This will usually take less than a minute. With this knowledge, place it into a custom Anki deck or a spreadsheet as a way to review your incorrects. Getting into this rhythm of analyzing text quickly and understanding what makes the answer the best choice is only going to boost your scores from here. At first, this may seem scary breezing through a lot of information in such a short time, but in our experience, the UR questions encompass nearly all of the high yield concepts that can show up on MBME exams. That is to say, if you can answer all of the 4,000 questions on UWorld, you can answer the questions that you come across on test day. At the rate of 160 questions per day, you can complete nearly all of UWorld in just 25 days. This leaves enough breathing room to even go back to do a second pass of UWorld during your dedicated, which should, in theory, be faster. On your second pass, you can even start to do 200 to 240 questions per day, given your familiarity with the questions. For the rest of our viewers who either did not keep up with Ponky and preclinicals or are studying for step 1 after a long break, the rest of the video is for you. We are now back to our favorite application, Anki. The philosophy behind Anki for step 1 versus step 2 is really not that different. We recommend using the Anking deck and doing about 100 to 200 new flashcards per day. However, keep in mind that this number can vary depending on the number of days that you have between starting the deck and your exam date. The key for Anki, just like in our step 2 video, was learning how to do incorrects the correct way. Specifically, we recommended using the x plus y equals z format to learn. We encourage our viewers to watch that chapter in our step 2 video for a more thorough explanation. But to summarize, it's basically making cards on a singular piece of information that you had learned from going through your Q-Banks. The key is to make these cards as simple as possible and keep up with them as you go through your dedicated. The end goal is that by your step 1 test date, you would be a walking library of your QBanks and you will be able to link each question that you come across to previous QBank questions or MBME questions. For me, this was how I went into my step 1 exam and in my opinion, one of the best ways in preparing for any standardized exams. A key difference between Step 1 and Step 2 is the emphasis of foundational concepts in Step 1. As such, students early in their medical careers may often come across very unfamiliar concepts that may take a long time to learn. Let's take a look at glycogen storage diseases. On first aid, you may come across a famous page that displays a dense table of information about these diseases, and you may have felt a bit of anxiety wondering where to start. The key here is to absorb only what is needed. Go into resources such as Dirty Medicine to learn those high yield points. Then, when you come across these questions during your QBanks, you can refer back to resources such as first aid to supplement any missing gaps of knowledge. Think of it like constructing a tower. You first start off by establishing your foundation with high yield points from resources such as Melman or Dirty Medicine. Then, as you are going through your QBanks thoroughly, you may come across new concepts that you throw into that tower. Eventually, you will be able to build a final product that is a combination of all the various resources that you use to prep for your exam. Now that we reached the end of the video, we'd like to talk about our study schedules during our dedicated periods. In the mornings, we usually started out with the most intensive parts of our studying, which was going through the 160 questions a day. After that, we usually jumped into doing Anki and completing our daily card. At the end of the day, when our brains are tired, we usually pop open the more passive resources such as First Aid or Pathoma and read a chapter or two before bed. We call this the triple therapy, covering both active and passive learning throughout our dedicated periods. Step 1 is ultimately a beast of an exam, and it is an introduction for medical students into the world of board exams. We hope the knowledge that we have provided today will give you an early advantage in completing this exam successfully. As always, we thank you for watching our videos, and stay tuned for more content in the future.